it's been a long week. It continues to be a long week. There's a lot of volatility, and that just continues to be a big part of the storyline now. It's been about Jay Powell partially, but let's be honest, the real focus right there, Russia, Ukraine, what's going on there, and what are the ramifications of all of this? So yesterday, when we look at that whole scenario, we have a little bit of pressure early on hitting the Dow, and the Dow started to slide didn't get bit hit that bad, but we did close off about 100 points. Then you look over at the NASDAQ, that was hit much earlier in the trading session. That continued and accelerated. And by the end of the day, we finished down about 200 points there, about 1.5%. So huge outperformance or, or however you want to uh, uh, frame it. But the NASDAQ under some very, very serious pressure yesterday. And we've been talking about this rotation and the concerns that the market seems to have with these higher multiple stocks. Obviously, many of those are within the NASDAQ itself. So that was a big part of what was going on there. Crude, $115 a barrel, $116 a barrel did actually start. That was the overnight from yesterday. We actually mostly were trading somewhere between 108 and 109 for the majority of the day. 37 million contracts yesterday, still pretty strong, but well off the 40 plus million contracts we've been trading. I think a lot of that might have had to do with some of the confusion that was out there. By the way, in the final couple hours of the day, call it the last three hours or so of the day, we had some very, very put large put buying in the triple Qs. So you're looking at NASDAQ. You are also seeing it in the spiders. So the S&P 500, as well as the XLF. Now we've been talking about what's been going on with the financials. They have really been starting to get a more of an acceleration to the downside, it seems like, each and every day. So that's a, something that continues to play out. Volatility index, yes, 29 to 32, finished right around that 30 level. You had Apple, we had Tesla, both very, very active throughout the day. That barometer of Tesla, again, seems to be playing out pretty nice, down about 4.5% yesterday. We continue to look at what the directions are for Tesla within the day certainly is something that's been really showing up in terms of the actual movement we've seen in the broader part of the NASDAQ itself. 10-year, right around 184. Holding up there, uh, at, listening to the testimony of Chair Powell, obviously they were coming in and out a little bit more yesterday. As a matter of fact, the day before, we were definitely focused on Powell, and that seemed to be a much uh, bigger piece of the day yesterday, a little bit smaller piece. So a lot of negatives that were going on throughout the day. Data dog down about 9%. Okta down about 8%, Lucid down about 8%, Zoom down about 7%. You get the idea. A lot of those big names that we talked about time and time again throughout the pandemic, a lot of those have been easing back or not even easing back, getting pushed back pretty rapidly to the downside. Those Chinese names were under a little bit of pressure yesterday as well. PDD, JD, some of those names pushing to the downside. Boeing down about 4%. Salesforce, after those earnings, stock had a really nice ramp to the upside. By the time we actually got into the trading session, Salesforce was moving to the downside, moving to the downside in a little bit of a hurry compared to where it was earlier in the day, down about 2.5%. Semiconductors under pressure throughout the session. That was down about 2%. We did have some nice bright spots. So Walmart, Caterpillar, J&J, &J, Best Buy, Best Buy up about 9%. Kroger was up about 11%. Splunk hit a nice night move to the upside as well. So not everything was getting pushed, but you can tell big number of different areas within the market that were getting pushed to the downside. We did have those jobs reports, the unemployment dropped to 3.8. That was something that everybody was definitely focused on. We look at the numbers today, very, very positive. So there's a lot of positives to take away, but as people are watching television and they're seeing what's going on around the rest of the globe, those concerns are definitely showing up. And we're seeing a little bit of that in the 10 year itself because the 10 year has been on a little bit of a slide of late as well, pushing down back under that one eight. So we were 2%. We pulled back 1.68. Then we started to rise once again. We got up over one nine once again and then pulled back. And here we are in that pullback mode once again. We'll see how low the 10 year does start to push to the downside because it's feeling like it's going even lower than it is right now based upon what we're seeing and the reaction from the financials. Financials were down over 2% right out of the gate. They were down 2.5% as we get into this first hour. Materials getting hit a little bit. That's been accelerating as well. Semiconductors and tech. 
They weren't down too bad early on, but they started to get hit pretty decent. Last I looked, we were looking at a Dow that was down a little over 400 points, maybe 450 points. That's been accelerating throughout the session. Also, NASDAQ accelerating down about 100 early, maybe it recovered some, but down a little bit over 130, 140 points last I looked. And then, of course, S&P 500 down about 50 points. Russia, Ukraine, certainly that is the focal point that people continue to look at. And as they took over last night, Europe's largest nuclear plant, that was something that did make a huge impact, it seemed, on the markets themselves. So what we absolutely have to watch that. We look over at crude. 111, not for very long, jumped up to 113. As I said, we're looking at the 10-year right around 176 or so. Does it go a little bit lower than that? Energy did turn positive pretty rapidly. It did start the day relatively flat, but started to accelerate to the upside. What were some of those names that were working? Well, those beta energy names, once again, Occidental. We talked about some of the unusual option activity yesterday that was not only out in time, but way up in terms of strike. Doesn't mean it can't get there, but certainly very interesting to see that kind of activity. Diamondback, another one of those in that beta energy space. Look over at Gap Stores, having a really nice reaction because of the earnings last night. Oh, and Mosaic. We were talking about this yesterday. Can it make a very another move to the upside after the big move that it's already made? Well, we got that question answered today. Another nice move to the upside there, CF Industries as well. A lot of weakness. You look at those banks, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, you go across American Express. That was one where we had that huge put buying. I believe it was on Tuesday. 10,000 of the downside puts were being bought in American Express. Those are starting to play out a little bit as that stock under some very big pressure today. Airlines under pressure, United being one of those. Costco with those great earnings numbers. But again, you've got to look at this and you've got to look and say, all right, well, what is the fundamental story here, though? They, they're, they're doing everything right. But what do the fundamentals say? And I just looked, I tweeted about this not too terribly long ago. Target trades at about a 16, 17, somewhere in there as far as its P.E., had very nice numbers. Walmart, nice numbers, trades around a 20 PE. So you look over and, and, and check out what's going on with Costco. And they've got this great business model. They've got the subscription. They've got this. They've got that. Great numbers. But it's trading in the mid 40s in terms of PE. That's probably the biggest reason why, especially as people are more and more focused on that. That's probably the biggest reason why that stock, despite the, the fact they had great numbers, is getting pushed to the downside because of the fact that that PE is definitely still very, very stretched. So that's something as well. Philip Morris, that's my unusual. Well, I got somebody floating around behind me right now. Well, ladies and gentlemen. There's... Today we're having uh, stuffed <laughs> stuffed hamburgers, bacon and cheese with uh, a little grilled onions and some smoked Gouda. Yeah. Uh, by Target and- uh, Yeah, what Apple. I never get out of here. <laughs> All right. So I've got two unusuals and we're out of here. And I will be on the five o'clock show later on this evening. Philip Morris is number one. Again, we look at certain names within the markets that are actually working pretty nice to the upside. And some of those names are the names that oftentimes just get kind of thrown and cast off. We don't talk about very much. Philip Morris has been making a pretty decent move. Stock just under 5250. They're buying next Friday's expiring, 4,500 of next Friday's expiring, 40, 54 calls. Those are going for 28 cents up to 32 cents. So you're going to have to make a little bit of a move, not a huge move, but it's in a short time frame, one week, fairly inexpensive calls in my opinion. Cliffs, I have to bring this up one more time. Cliffs, it continues to hit and it's hit once again. And we've got 6,000 of the March 26 calls being bought. Cliffs trading at 2625. They're buying the March 26 calls, 110 all the way up to $1.60 on those calls. Folks, have a great day of trading and have a great weekend.